Hello and good morning everyone and thank you for joining our Adobe Creative Cloud webinar this morning. Um, so we are joined here by Iona Walters from Adobe and Luke Keenan from Byte Software Services. All right then guys, I will kick off then. Um, hopefully you're seeing my screen okay. Um, so I'm Iona Walters. I'm a Senior Solutions Consultant with Adobe. Um, I perhaps have met some of you before at uh, various events and that. Um, if I haven't, then uh, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us for this session. My aim today is to give you a kind of a bit of an overview as to uh, the full, um, full extent of the creative cloud as it is now because it's not just a question of um, having a whole bunch of fantastic desktop applications, it's a really complete entire service now which is fully integrated um, and really surrounds you um, wherever you're working um, and in whatever way you need um, it to do so. So I'm going to give you a bit of an overview as to uh, the interface itself. Um, I know that some of you are not already on the Creative Cloud, there may be some of you that are already members of the Creative Cloud. Um, so the new things that I'm going to focus on today will cover the mobile applications and the integration there, as well as the libraries, newly released libraries um, functionality which enables you to create and access and collaborate on your assets um, from wherever you are and then um, uh, access the assets directly from within your desktop applications as well as via your mobile applications as well. So um, we're going to take a look at that. I'm also going to cover off a few of the um, latest release um, updates to the desktop applications and we're just going to see how much we've got time for with that. Um, but I'm going to cover as much as I possibly can um, within the next 40 minutes. So. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do, as I mentioned, is to take a look at um, your what we call your creative profile. And this is actually uh, kind of everything about you that sits not just within your desktop environment, but also within your online environment as well. So I'm going to take a quick look at that. And we'll move on to uh, looking at a couple of the mobile applications in action, as well as, us, as I said, the desktop applications. So this is your creative profile as you see it on adobe.com or this is my creative profile so if I log on to adobe.com um, forward slash UK this um, and sign into the creative cloud this is automatically the screen that will greet me each time I remain um, signed in and as you can see it uh, lists all of the um, elements within my profile which includes the desktop applications that I have as well as the mobile applications any add-ons I've installed and um, it gives me access to my files to my Lightroom photographs um, to my typekit fonts, to my color libraries and palettes, um, as well as my assets library as well. And it also has links directly into my creative uh, profile within Behance, and also uh, my portfolio website, which is my pro site website, also linked to Behance, which I have. So it's really kind of my one-stop shop for accessing all of those different areas. Um, so if we just take a look at that in action, there's various different ways of accessing this information. Um, I mentioned the desktop app, um, which you may or may not have come across. If I just come into here, when I come into my applications, I basically, um, when I install my desktop applications, I'll automatically be prompted to install this desktop app, which basically synchronizes um, everything to do with my uh, files on my desktop. So if I just open up my folder here. This is the um, folder online that's going to open, but I've also got a um, folder here, my Creative Cloud files. This is basically everything that I work with within my Creative Cloud space, all my um, files. I've got a lot of demo assets and media assets and that sort of thing in here. Um, so this is on my desktop and I have it automatically synced to my online environment so I can access this from wherever I need to. So that's my files and um, that means I can constantly make sure that I've always got the most up-to-date file and I can access it from all the various different machines that I work from um, as well as from my mobile app as well. There's also Creative Cloud mobile app. Um, so the other thing that I have in here is my home screen. This is really quite nice. and makes me feel good about myself <laughs> on a daily basis because um, it gives me information about who's been looking at projects that I've uploaded on Behance, anyone who's followed my work, that sort of thing. Um, but it also just has a little log of when I've installed updates um, to applications and um, also uh, 
it gives me little um, notifications if somebody has requested um, to collaborate with me on a folder or something like that. So within my Creative Cloud folder space, it's very, very easy for me to um, collaborate with other people. All I need to do is put in their email addresses. They'll get a notification that I'm asking them to collaborate on a folder, and that means that they can access, share, uh, work with any of the assets, upload assets to that folder as well. So I can create work groups and, and manage that from within my desktop application as well as my online space as well. Um, so if I just jump over to this folder window here, I would need to have um, my Creative Cloud um, syncing on, but I can also access um, and share and collaborate th with these particular folders as well. I've just got my syncing paused at the moment because um, I don't want it to interfere with the um, internet uh, broadcast that we're doing at the moment. So I've got multiple files that I've just put in there. Okay, so that's my online space and my files. Um, the other thing that I have here is the ability to manage all of my desktop applications. And this is really great and it's been um, updated quite recently to enable you to um, also um, uninstall um, your applications if you need to. But you can see these are all the ones that I've got installed currently. Um, I've got a couple of versions of Muse. There was a previous version that I still work with as well for demo purposes. Um, I can also see all of the applications here that I don't yet have um, installed. So I can um, manage that side of things from there. I can also access directly um, the tutorials um, online from here, which is really, really useful, and we use all the time just to make sure we're up to date with what's the uh, what's the latest release um, and the things that we need to be across. So if I just show you Illustrator, for example, this is a really, really lovely interface now that shows all of the training um, and all of the um, new features um, since the launch of Creative Cloud. So you can see there's been a huge amount um, of big launches um, since we first released the Creative Cloud just within, a, within Illustrator alone. So you've got various tabs here. You can choose to um, get started from scratch, and this will be a really, really nice um, access point for people new to Illustrator. You've got essential um, techniques here, and this is kind of you know divided into really useful um, sections so you can master particular areas of uh, the application. You've also got key techniques, and this is more workflow-based um, uh, tutorials. So um, it will take you through kind of quite a quite a long a long process, several stages, and particularly within the web apps that will take you through, or the um, uh, InDesign within InDesign, it will show you how to create a digital publication from, from scratch, for example, within the key techniques tab. Under the new features, again, you can see these are some of the things that we'll um, look at today, um, and that's kind of where I tend to spend most of my time. The other great thing is when you launch your desktop applications, it'll actually bring up now a home screen as well, um, which will give you a heads up as to what the latest um, is, uh, the latest features are with the, whichever particular re release has just happened. So that's my um, desktop applications there. I've got my assets, as I've mentioned here, but not just my files. I've got access to all of the fonts. These are the fonts that I've installed and synced from Typekit. So I've got these not just as web fonts, but these are downloaded as desktop fonts. And for those of you who haven't come across um, Typekit, if I just jump over to uh, the Typekit website here, you'll be able to see this is the interface. It's very, very easy. I can browse for fonts within here. And if I click on this fonts tab up here, I can browse for web use fonts or desktop use fonts or both. Um, so that will just uh, give me the fonts that are available to me and I can browse by different styles here as well. It's very, very easy to then use these fonts. So just hover over the font, click on use the font, and I either add it to a web kit for web use or I um, download it for my desktop and sync it. And that means I can use it across all of my desktop applications, which is great. Um, the other good thing, let me just show you something else in, um, in Typekit that's good. If I just open up a recent document here, let me open this, this document. If I open up a document and I've got fonts missing um, from this document, this is one that somebody shared with me, um, as long as I'm logged into the Creative Cloud um, from my desktop, uh, the great thing is, is that um, 
Photoshop will automatically ask me if I want to re-resolve and extract the fonts from type it in order to um, display this document correctly and enable all of these fonts to become editable. So that just does that automatically for me, which is fantastic. So let me just jump back into this interface. So um, along with that, I've also got within my assets tab here, I've got access to um, the market, the Creative Cloud Marketplace. And this is basically um, free uh, artwork, vector, vector graphics, photographs, designs, Photoshop. Um, documents that have, um, come from our Behance community that are available for you to download for free, to use within your designs, to use as starting points, um, etc. And you can download 50 of those per user every single month, so it's great. I use these all the time. There's some really, really lovely things on there. Um, so that's within my desktop tool. I've also, as I mentioned, I've got access to the community um, space here so I can see all the people that I'm following, I can look at their work, I can take a look at the activity around my work and I can um, also um, browse and discover new work from within here. I can of course jump over to my Hans portfolio, um, the Hans portfolio through this tab here, jump straight to it. So this is my, my kind of launching pad for everything really, my desktop application and I use it all the time. So this will just load up my um, Behance um, space here. So um, let me just jump back over to um, my adobe.com space because I also want to show you from here um, how to access the libraries section. So as I mentioned, this shows you all of your um, assets uh, kind of listed here and you can jump to them. So we've looked at the files already. This is my um, Lightroom um, uh, all of the uh, catalogues that I have um, synced to Lightroom Mobile appear through this tab here so I can access any of these images as and when I need them. Um, I'll jump back here. And, and the same from my mobile application as well. I can access any of those assets um, to use within my mobile apps. We'll see that in a second. Just come back to adobe.com. And um, I've also got um, the ability to jump to all of the things that the desktop app could hear as well. But along with that, I've got access to Adobe Color and the library. So let's just look at Adobe Color very quickly. We're going to look at the um, mobile application for Adobe Color as well and see how it syncs um, to the desktop applications. But I don't know how many of you are using Adobe Color, but it's a fantastic, fantastic place to create and save color palettes, um, which will then be synced via your Creative Cloud profile, um, as I said, to then be integrated into many, many of the desktop applications now. So that's including um, InDesign, uh, Illustrator, Photoshop, even Premiere and After Effects now have access um, to these color palettes. So really, really good stuff. So I can create and save palettes from within here. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll take a look um, shortly at the um, iPad application as well. Um, let's just jump back over here. So uh, the other new area, as I mentioned, is the libraries. And this is really what I want to just take a look at um, briefly now. So within here, I've got various different libraries that I've set up, some of them for my brushes. Um, and I mainly save the brushes that I create from my um, brushes mobile app. Again, we'll look at that in a second within that space. So you can see in here, I've got some Illustrator brushes, I've got some Adobe Sketch brushes, um, which is another mobile application. I've got Photoshop brushes that I've created within the brush app as well, um, all saved within here. And I can access um, this libraries panel. If I jump into, let's say, into Illustrator, for example, and um, I choose my brushes panel here. You can see these are the brushes mirrored with the online environment, um, but it's only showing me the Illustrator brushes as active, so I can select any of these brushes to then use within my compositions. I can also um, add brushes to this, and um, if I jump into Photoshop, Again, um, let's open up the uh, libraries panel here. It's just this little Creative Cloud icon here. You can see there's some color palettes I've got in my color um, library and my brushes here. And you can see these are the Photoshop brushes that are active instead this time. So I can use, I can also use Adobe Sketch brushes within here, which is quite nice. Um, so that's that. Uh, just to give you a heads up, this is the cooler panel 
um, which is the old cooler panel, now called the Adobe Color Themes panel. And I can access all of my um, color themes that were in the online space here, as you can see, um, from here. I can also create new color themes within here, and then they would automatically be synced and available to me across my other applications as well. Um, so you can start to see how everything's really, really joined up now. It's really good. Um, just while we're on that, I'm just going to jump very briefly into InDesign to show you something on Adobe Color. We're jumping around a little bit backwards and forwards here, but I just want to um, show you exactly how um, integrated everything is now. So again here, this is the What's New screen that comes up. So um, it's telling us that there's a new color theme tool as well as the... Um, integration with Adobe Color, um, as, as I've just mentioned, and also um, within um, InDesign, this release, particular enhancements for previewing um, and creating interactivity within fixed layouts for EPUB. So EPUB was a big release in October, um, fixed layout EPUB, and now we've had just very recently updates to that. Okay, so let me just click done on there, just very quickly open up this document because I just want to show you the colour panel in here as well. And again, it's um, saying that there's a font missing. Do you want to sync them? So I can say yes to that or just close it if I don't want to. Um, and um, here we have my Adobe Cooler um, panel within InDesign as well. So I can access again all of my colour themes. So that's nicely integrated. There's just one more really nice little tool within here though. Um, called the color theme tool, which is a, a new tool. If I select that and select a particular area um, uh, frame within my, um, within my design here and layout, um, it will automatically extract colors from that, which is really nice. So I can choose a particular um, colorway there. I can then add it to my swatches. If I just click on that, add it to my swatches, you'll see it appear in here, down the bottom. There it is. Um, and you'll see now that within um, Illust uh, InDesign, sorry, we also have um, these color folders, so I can select any folders within folders as well and create um, color groups from them. So I can create new folders um, of color groups here, so I can really start to manage and organize my colors, which is great. Um, and uh, the other thing I can do is add this to Adobe Cooler, of course. So this is adding to my um, Cooler panel here. So I click over to Adobe Cooler see this in action. I need to refresh it. This is one that I added um, just earlier on. Let's just refresh this. Give it a second. There we go. This is the muted one that's just appeared in here. So I've got access to this now from wherever I um, want to work. So just a little aside there. Let's just come out of the design. Okay, and we'll jump back to the online environment. So let's come out to brushes and we'll just take a look. And I've also got uh, within here the sketches that I've created within my online applications. And then also I've got this um, uh, uh, collection of images and assets that I've created uh, for the websites that I, that I have for all of my content. So I've got my um, logos and some social media. Um, icons, etc. in there. In order to add things to libraries, it's very, very simple. If I um, jump up here into Photoshop now, and let's just open the libraries panel up, I'm actually just going to create a new library here, and I'm going to call it um, Play On to go with this particular website design that we're looking at here. So if I click Create in there, I can then take anything from within my Photoshop document and drag it and drop it to add it to the library. So I can take this text for example, I can add that in there and I can take some images, drop them in here. Now that means of course that whenever I come into uh, my other applications or my online environment I've got access to this collection of assets here um, to use which is great. And equally if I wanted to take something from um, within this group here, so let's add this um, phone item to here, I can drag and drop elements, can you see that's a little trans fairly transparent sketch there, let's just put it on a higher level, 
um, and you can see it. So it's very easy for me to add elements to the library and um, it's not a brilliant example though, <laughs> you can hardly see that. Um, let me just uh, move that to the side so you can see, can you see there, there's a phone um, sketch that I've made from one of the mobile applications. Okay, so it's really easy to um, create and manage my libraries. Um, let me just come back into the one that we just created, which is Play On, and then I can show you here. Well, with that selected, I can then also choose to collaborate um, with somebody else in this library, and that will launch up the online space for me. And then I can add other users, um, other members of my team, etc., to that library and um, to give them um, permission just by adding an email and a little message to them if I want so that we can all make sure that we are using the same color palettes. I can add my color palettes into there as well. We can make sure we're all using the correct logos, icons, um, uh, fonts, etc. everything that we want within there. Okay, so hopefully that explains um, libraries to you. I need to move on because we've got so much more to cover. Um, so I'm just going to now launch um, some of the mobile applications for you. So let me just get reflector up just bear with me while I get the iPad launched. And let's turn the ring on. There we go, so you can see my iPad now. And I'm just going to launch some of the Adobe applications. You can see I've got some of the Adobe apps um, installed on here. I do use these all the time. There's a whole ton of them now. Um, so uh, the Creative Cloud desktop application I mentioned, that gives you um, access to browse your files saved within your online environment and mm -hmm. um, also synced with your desktop, of course. Mm -hmm. I can. Um, browse my Behance portfolio here. This is quite nice, this app to have installed if you've got work that you want to show to clients, etc. You can access it all from within here um, so that you can um, quickly select, um, select elements and browse through projects, etc. So that's quite nice to show. Um, let's just come out of there. Um, we've also got access to um, Behance um, as well. Uh, the online environment. Uh, here's Adobe Color um, and from here I can um, just make sure that I'm signed in. I can add new color themes. I can create from um, my camera roll, from my actual camera itself or from aspects within the Creative Cloud so I can browse to any image that I've got say within the Creative Cloud here. So here's the dancer um, that I can take if I open that file automatically analyze that picture and I can move these elements around to select different colorways within the image um, as to how I want to um, select the colors and then just click OK. Give it a name and then of course this theme will be therefore available to me. Um, it's currently being saved in my library panel here called Color Palettes um, but I could choose to save it within any of my other library panels here as well. So there we go, so that's really nice. So that library panel um, would then, that colour theme and palette would be then available to me in my desktop applications. Um, so let's come out of that. So Adobe Colour very briefly. Adobe Brush. I love Adobe Brush. Um, there's uh, various ways in which you can make brushes. Uh, these are the ones that I've created so far in the short time I've been using it. Um, if I click on plus, I can add, um, I can create a brush uh, from, from my camera, so I can take an image of something and create a brush from it straight away, um, from my Creative Cloud folder and also from my camera roll. So let's just um, jump into here, I just want to show you um, how I created this chain brush, let's choose that image there. When I come into here, I've got various different options as to how I create the brush. Um, don't worry too much about the preview because this is going to change um, a lot. This uh, top section, section here, I can have a little play with it. I can also draw on here to see how the brush is, but I'm going to alter it quite significantly. So um, we can create a Photoshop brush, an Illustrator brush, and a Sketch brush. I'm just going to show you I created an Illustrator brush in here. If I choose that option and then come on to Crop, what I can then do is actually manipulate this image um, so that I've got the section that I want um, actually being used in the brush. So let's do something like that. Um, let's call that the head and let's call that the tail. And then I can crop 
the brush in as well. So let's just position that centrally. And I can rotate it and move it around as, as to how I need it. As well as my, excuse me. <coughs> and once I've done that, I can come into refine the brush as well. So I can choose to um, add in or remove more of the um, the white in the image um, to give it the, the better contrast. If I just do something like that, I'm just going to come back to crop and just crop it ever so slightly more. So I get a nice tight image there. And you can see now how my brush is going to appear. I've got all sorts of other things within here. I can set the size of the brush. I can also choose to um, alter the pressure um, according to the size, etc. Um, and I can also um, try painting with different colours in here too. So once I've done that, I can come in to save the brush, uh, give it a name, and um, this will be then available to me, uh, not just within my um, sketch application, <coughs> excuse me, um, but also available to me, um, so these are sketch brushes here, they'll be available to me in my um, sketch apps this one here um, and the illustrator one um, will be available to me in my illustrator desktop application to work with let's come into adobe shape now so adobe shape um, this is great actually for if you're out and about on the move and you want to um, create something actually from your camera roll let me just click on the camera here i'm just going to point it at my um let's see if, oh Point it at my keyboard. Here we go. So you can see here, I've got the keyboard. I can change the amount that it's taking in just by using the slider on the side. Once I'm happy with the image, I'm just going to click OK. And this is going to draw some smooth shapes for me and, and capture that image that I can use as a pattern. I can accept that. And of course, the other thing is I can um, also, let's just come away from that, um, I can also add something from my camera roll. So let's go back again and look at the um, chain image, this different chain, in, chain image here. Uh, let's just reduce the amount of detail it's taking in from the background and click OK. Again, that's going to draw some nice smooth curves for me. The great thing with this is I can also then accept it, let it draw the shape, give it a name, chain two. Uh, the other thing that I can do is come into this, um, and then of course um, I've actually got it added at the moment. I've got it added to a particular library. Um, called icons, which is where I put all of my um, all of my um, shapes uh, from here. So I know that when I come into my Creative Cloud environment, I can easily find this particular asset to work with. And this would be a vector um, piece of work, so I can bring this into Illustrator from my icons library panel um, directly into Illustrator and work with that. Now let's just come into Adobe Sketch, just show you one more. Uh, so Adobe Sketch, um, again you can see this is uh, some images that I've created with the actual um, sketch brush that I created within Adobe Brush. Um, the nice thing about this is that I can, from within this environment, I can send this to um, Photoshop and I can also send it to Illustrator as well. And I can actually expand all of the paths within this. This is made with a sketch brush, so um, all, all I would get is the paths. It wouldn't, and um, once it's expanded, it wouldn't keep this particular brush, but then I can apply any of my Illustrator brushes to this path. Um, so this would just take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to let it work away in the background. And I'm just going to come out of my mirroring uh, so that I can share you in the desktop applications um, some elements within here. Now let me just uh, jump back into Adobe Sketch. Let's just see how it's going. And I'll keep that running in the background. And then at some point within Photoshop, there we go. 
it will automatically appear for me. This is a bit odd <laughs> if you've forgotten that you've sent something to Photoshop while you've been out on the move and then you open up Photoshop, it will suddenly appear in front of you, <laughs> um, but it's really, really handy in that way. Um, I'm just going to send it to um, Illustrator as well just to um, show you that also. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let's get on and take a little look at some of the new features within Illustrator. At some point, that um, drawing will pop up within here, but I just want to now move on to show you some of the new desktop um, application features. Um, so we'll leave libraries alone. Hopefully, um, that's all nice and clear. Basically, you've got access to everything. Look, here's my new brush come in here, um, which is great, so I can easily apply that. Um, brush to um, paths and shapes, etc. I can also edit that, of course, too. Um, so I just want to show you uh, the new curvature tool, um, which I've... Oh, here we go. <laughs> As I mentioned, this is the uh, sketch from Adobe Sketch popped into my desktop application seamlessly. Um, and now what I can actually do is um, select object and if I come down to this option here, sketch and line art, I'm then, as I mentioned, able to expand this to the paths. And then I can, of course, apply um, any of my um, illustrator brushes to that and start working with those paths, change the, um, the shapes and the size, etc., the paths of them, and start to um, create my, my work from those paths. So let's just um, close that one down seconds jump out of there as I mentioned it is a bit jumping backwards and forwards thing um, but let me jump now as I mentioned into some of the um, new features so um, I'm just going to come down through to here I've mentioned in InDesign the latest updates have involved the um, color integration and the color group we've also got typekit enhancements so you've got really good browsable um, typekit fonts now and you can preview these fonts um, within your designs and also the fixed um, layout EPUB updates if you're interested in that do go on to the InDesign page online there's tons of tutorials on there and um, it's really really fantastic innovation the EPUB 3 fixed layout um, within Illustrator, um, I'm going to show you these two elements here. You've also got live shapes and um, the ability to um, copy um, CSS um, directly from Illustrator and extract um, CSS to apply to your web documents. Again, these tutorials are all online, as well as um, extended SVG support. So really, really good SVG capabilities within um, Illustrator now. So let's just take a quick look at the curvature tool and also how to join paths that you may not have got uh, quite correctly joined. So my curvature tool sits, let me just find it, just right up here next to the pen, the curvature tool. So if I have that selected, what that enables me to do, and I've got the um, graphs paper um, selected on here as you can see, it enables me to click in a space, let's just find a little bit more room over here, got a bit carried away with this tool as you can see, <laughs> enables me to um, click in a space and um, click to the next point and it will automatically draw the curve for me as I click around to join it up. So you can see I've got kind of a smooth curve all the way around here. Now if I want to create something along these lines, all I need to do is to hold down the Alt key um, for the particular point that I want to become either a straight line or um, a pointed join like that. So let's just delete that and I'll show you how to do that. So uh, for this particular one, I'm just drawing um, normally, click into those points, but I'm going to hold down the Alt key when I click in this space here, let go of the Alt key and join that up. So what that does is create a point um, for the join at this point. Now if I wanted this to be a straight line, all I would do is also hold down the Alt key when I draw this point here, and that creates the straight line. Do you see what I mean? So if you want a straight line, you need to hold down the Alt key at either end of that particular line. If not, you'll get a nice pointy join. So really, really, really nice, quick and easy way to draw um, curved shapes um, and variations of with the curvature tool. Um, this is a very quick squiggle. I'm not sure why you would ever want to draw this particular shape, uh, but as you can see at the moment, none of these paths are joined up. Um, and so we've got a really, really nice quick way of enabling you to do that now. 
and um, that particular tool is hidden under the pencil tool, which is normally there, of course. So there's the pencil tool, and the join tool is here. And with that selected, all I need to do is to draw over the area that I want to join, which is there. Let's draw over that, and that joins that one. And let's join uh, that one as well. This one here, you can see, is crossing over. So I want to get rid of that, and that does it for me. And again, this will join this path here. So really, really quick to create um, to create shapes um, now with both the curvature tool and with the join tool. Hopefully, that's going to save you um, some nice and um, painstaking time there. Uh, so let me jump out of Illustrator. And um, we are just going to spin through a couple more things. Um, I'd like to show you a couple of things in Photoshop now because there's been some lovely enhancements to the Blur Gallery. Let's just get rid of our Photoshop sketch there. And um, the first thing I'm going to do actually is show you um, extracting action. So um, for those of you who need to create, um, this is this is a design for a website. For those of you who need to create and extract assets from uh, web lay layouts, from Photoshop documents, etc., um, Extract is a really, really, really fantastic um, development that uh, works not just within Photoshop but also within Dreamweaver and also within the Creative Cloud online environment. So it enables you to select particular elements and if I right click on this and select extract assets it brings up my extract panel here and it enables me to create whatever form of asset from this particular element that I have selected. I can select multiple layers or layer groups and um, that's no problem at all and that will create um, uh, the images for me. I can create an SVG, I can create my PNGs etc from here. I can also choose to create multiple sizes of it all in one hit. So if I'm creating for my mobile, tablet and desktop environment for example I can do that. I can also by clicking on the settings tab here I can also specify um, the sizes that I want. I can choose which folder it goes into and I can give it a suffix as well. Um, so I've got the ability to specify all of that and then when I click extract it will be placed into that folder and create that asset for me so really really nice no more slicing documents up and um, if you name your uh, layers correctly some of you might have used um, generator already but if you label your um, layers with a, a .png or .jpg etc and um, you can actually choose to also generate your assets using um, generator here and that will just automatically put those um, assets that have been named in your layers into a folder next to your project so again loads of tutorials about that online and um, let me just show you how this works in the online environment if I jump over to my creative cloud here um, and let's just go into my assets uh, you can see you can see here actually I'm being prompted to try Photoshop um, uh, web workflows extract here um, but if I just jump into a particular PSD all I need to do is to open up the PSD let's take this Dreamweaver design here so I'm going to choose this PSD and um, I, I can also of course share this um, with my colleagues I can then um, uh, send them a link or I can collaborate on this folder so even if um, somebody doesn't have a Creative Cloud um, paid account you can set up a free account to access this Photoshop document um, in this way and you can extract all of the assets within it so you can see the document here you've got the ability to view the layer comps as well so there's a mobile tablet and desktop layer comp um, within this document so these are all the document states you can preview so I can easily extract the assets from them you can see the fonts and the colors that have been used and the gradients within this document but if I select a particular element I've got options here I can see um, the sizes and pixels and percent and um, if I want to I can see um, the position on the page I can copy the CSS directly from there if this was live active text um, like this for example I could choose to copy the text and I can also choose to extract the asset so again if I can back to here this gives me a ton of options and I can also choose to scale it 
at this point as well, give it the particular name that I want. So really, really nice, fast workflow. Um, the other place, as I've mentioned, that that's available is within Dreamweaver. Um, so this is, I'm actually looking at the layer comp of the mobile application within here. This is my extract panel. When you open up Dreamweaver, you'll get the option to load um, a Photoshop document from the Creative Cloud into here. It needs to be in your Creative Cloud online environment. Um, so I've got the mobile option set up here. And here is my um, uh, document which I've um, started to build and um, what I'm able to do actually not just um, see all of these elements or copy the CSS or you know if it was the live text selected again I can copy the text so I can copy all of these elements and add them into my document manually the other thing that I can do is to let me try and drag this into the right place is to drag this into here I'm going to choose the folder IMG as the path to send the image into and um, place this asset. There you go. So that's automatically created the asset and placed it correctly into my um, web design. How fast and brilliant is that? It's a really, really lovely way to work. So we've got this um, interoperability again directly within Dreamweaver, looking at an asset on the Creative Cloud, extracting and creating the elements for you and putting it in the page. So really, really speeded up workflow. And again, I can switch to my desktop or tablet view um, within this space and do the same down here. And I can start to build the document um, in that form as well. So that's what I'm going to show you on Dreamweaver, but again, tons and tons of things um, within the Dreamweaver release, so do take a look at the online tutorials, either by jumping from your desktop application here to them or um, searching online. Of course, Adobe TV is still full of tutorials as well. Um, so let's come out of there and jump back into Photoshop. Um, hopefully this isn't too confusing, me jumping backwards and forwards all the time, but I now want to show you a couple of um, features within Photoshop quickly while I've got the chance. So um, I am running a little short on time, so let me just um, show this as quickly as I can. Uh, this is a particular picture I took in Fiji. You can see actually the original image is all completely in focus there. What I wanted to do though was to add some movement and the feeling of movement to this so that to get the feeling that his arms are moving forward and that he's kind of in position but he's kind of pushed his arms out. And um, so I've been able to do that using the new spin blur and um, let me just, uh, sorry, the path blur motion blur. So let me show you that in action here. I've actually created this and um, converted this into a smart object so I can apply the filter and keep changing it as I as I like. So if I come into the blur gallery and I'm going to choose path blur here and I'm going to take uh, the path here just to move along his arm. There we go. I'm going to choose to start at a particular speed, which is fine, I don't want it to go too fast, and I'm going to choose the end point to not be blurred there. So you can see I've kind of got this, um, I've got the movement as I want it here, and coming into focus here. Of course, the rest of him is now out of focus, um, but I'm going to just draw another path down here, and to make sure I've got this one selected, I'm going to take the starting speed to zero and the end speed to zero. Let's just reselect this one for some reason that has changed. So let's just increase it. Got them both selected. Let's take one away. Okay. Let's just click away from that now. come back into here, I can come in and edit at any point, I'm going to add a new path, and just say, bear with me, new path into there, and let's just make sure we've got this one selected, take the time and speed, and then And let's just add it back into this point here. Oh, 
so do bear with me, I'm very twitchy with my um, editing today. And for some reason it's not letting me select just this one on its own, let me select this. Oh no, I do apologise. Getting some kind of um, bug in here. Let me just cancel out this potentially because I haven't done a reboot in a little while. But let me just show you in this one that luckily I've created earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see, so this particular one here, I've got um, the speed reduced right down, whereas I've created this path here, so I've got the endpoint speed at 63, and again, with this one that I've drawn across this arm here, I have the endpoint speed coming to zero, and the starting point speed here on this particular point at 129 pixels, so you've got control as to the speed that's happening at this point, the speed that's happening at this point, the speed that's happening at this point, and then this one here, as I've mentioned, I've taken down to zero, so that this keeps the rest of the um, image in focus, so sorry that didn't work in the um, demo for the other one, let me just show you the spin below now in action as well. So this is the um, spin added to the Brighton Big Winner. This is a helicopter journey that I took a little while ago. Obviously the Brighton wheel does not spin this fast, so don't come to Brighton expecting to have that kind of journey on the spinning wheel. Um, but again, I've converted this into a smart object. I'm going to add the filter in the blur gallery here. I'm going to choose the spin blur. And it will bring up the, um, the same um, interface here, but just with the spin blur selected. And what I can do is just position this onto here. I can change the rotation and the angle of the um, blur and the size of the blur area that's being affected. So if I take it something like that. I can also um, choose with these inner areas here. This is the um, sort of the fading of the blur effect, the feathering, if you like. Um, so I can extend that out like that. And then I can either use uh, the center of the wheel to increase or decrease the amount of blur. Obviously we don't want anything crazy like that. So we'll just take it down to a very, very small amount there. Or I can use um, this slider here, which is the blur angle, essentially um, the amount of segment that's moving um, the angle of the blur happening there. Okay. The other thing that I can add is some strobing if I want to. I can add in a um, strobing amount to give the appearance of the strobe that a camera would add, for example. So I can increase the number of strobes there or decrease it. Hopefully you can see that. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So there's the number of strobe flashes decreasing and increasing there. Okay, that's the spin blur. The other thing that I can add in from here is the um, tilt shift, which is really nice um, for a particular image like this, um, which has been in the release before, but I just wanted to show you it's um, now all within this blur gallery interface. So I can add in a tilt shift um, blur to this as well. And um, again, I can increase the amount, decrease the amount on here. And I can also, within the blur effects, um, increase the light bokeh change the light range that that's happening within. Let's just bring this in a little bit and let's add some bokeh colour into there. So you can see there I can start to affect um, the light bokeh and give it some quite interesting um, effects in there as well. So that's my spin blur and my tilt shift blur. Now we are, I think I've probably squeeze out another five minutes. <laughs> so let me just um, pop on to um, a couple more effects. I've shown you some things in um, Dreamweaver already. There's loads of nice things within Edge Animate for those of you who create um, animations uh, for the web. 
um, we've actually spent a lot of time making sure that the um, the runtime has been reduced um, uh, for the loading um, of the animation. So it's really, really fast performing now. It's a really nice new preloader option within there as well. And you can also um, choose where your assets are now stored. So if you have assets that have been used elsewhere in your web designs, for example, you can set your images and assets that are used within your um, Edge Animate um, creations to be in particular folders so that wasn't possible before but that now is um, and also new compositions as you open up compositions of, from previous versions within new ones they will automatically upgrade and become these new faster performing um, compositions which is great so do have a go with Edge Animate it's a wonderful wonderful program to create animations without writing any code um, I just wanted to show you one final um, heads up around Premiere Pro because I know we have some video users online so this is the last thing that I'll do um, before we take some questions um, so let me just open up this project um, I just wanted to show you now how easy it is to browse for media not just within um, your desktop environment or your online environment um, or your drives for clips etc but you can actually browse within other Premiere Pro projects now and um, so I've got my media browser window here this is my project window but I've got my media browser window here and I've actually just navigated to my creative clouds and um, folder here and I am going to take a look in my Premiere folder so if I double click that I've got my project and um, that I'm working on currently is actually within this folder but this is another project um, so if I double click on this particular Premiere Pro project file within the media browser I can now actually expand that and see all of the individual clips and images within there just let me load their previews there we go and also um, sequences um, so I've done like a very very quick rough edit on the sequence there if I open that up it will load into my um, uh, source monitor there so I can take a look at the edit but you can also see it's loaded up um, something here now I can't um, make changes to this it won't let me make changes to it but I can preview it um, within here as a sequence and I can also do something quite nice which is to enable me to view um, two sequences together I can then select some clips from within the sequence I'm browsing to and if I do command copy or control copy, I can then come down to my current sequence, put in the playhead, and I can paste those clips from one sequence into another. So I haven't even had to import the sequence. Um, this will automatically import the clips. Now, if it was a previous version of the project that I was then um, browsing back to and used the same clips, it would, um, <coughs> excuse me, it, um, it wouldn't bring in the new clips. Um, if they're already in here. Um, if I want to um, duplicate media though, however, during an import, I've got this option here to allow duplicate media during import. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for those of you who need to work across various different projects, that's a really, really nice way of doing so. Um, let me just show you one more, two more things within here. Um, we've got really, really nice masking and tracking now within Premiere Pro. So this is an After Effects feature being brought into Premiere Pro. And this enables you to add a mask and track um, an effect to a particular clip. So if I just turn off this one here and play this image here, you can see on this guy's face there's been a colorized effect. And slide, but it's tracked to his face, just to space alone. And the way that that's been done, if I just come into my effect controls here, it's a posterize effect that's been added. Let's just collapse some of those. So this is a posterize effect. Any of my effects from my video effects panel um, can um, let me just find the effect. Sorry, bear with me. Scroll across there. There it is. Um, any of my video effects that I add on here, so let's just say we could do a blur um, and just choose a Gaussian blur. If I add this onto this clip, 
and here's the Gaussian blur here. You can see that I've got the option to add a mask, so I can um, create a polygon mask or a free draw bezier or an ellipse mask on there. And um, when I create that mask, I can let's just say, let's just track it to this guy here briefly. I can choose to, let's just apply a bit of blurriness there. I can choose to, of course, invert that mask or not, so I could just keep him in focus. And then when I press play, um, that mask will actually track, as you can see, really nicely to that person. It will track through 3D as well. As you saw, this guy, um, his face gets covered by his hands. It comes shooting right forward in shot. Um, um, but it still manages to um, track him really well. So any any areas that you want to change, all of the keyframes are there for you, so you can easily come in and make changes to particular keyframes um, and um, apply multiple masking effects across multiple clips. So like I say, any, um, any of the effects currently within um, of the video effects panel, you can add these masks to and create the tracking effect really nicely. So that just saves you jumping out to um, After Effects. Something else that saves you jumping out to After Effects is the ability to now um, edit text captions created in After Effects directly within Premiere Pro. So all that's happened with this particular one is if I right click it and let's just show it in project. Reveal in project. So this is an After Effects composition. Let's just expand this window up. Very quickly, this is my After Effects composition here. And um, let's just edit original to show you an After Effects. All that I need to do within here is to enable a particular um, function within the properties. So it's just going to open that up here. Here's my After Effects composition. And all I need to do is right click on it. And composition settings. I just need to make sure within the advanced tab that I've got this particular um, element selected, which is template, unlocks text layers, editable in Premiere Pro. And so that means that when this project um, composition is sitting within Premiere Pro, I can load it into the source monitor. So I just need to load it into the source monitor. And when I come to effects controls, it loads up the text fields that are available to me for editing. So I can put in um, my web URL, for example. And then you can see that that is now automatically updated. It doesn't really fit very well now. <laughs> um, maybe I'll put my tool behind it as well. But that has automatically updated the text within the caption there. Okay, so again, really, really time-saving um, functionality there. Um, I am going to um, finish there. Um, so, what would be really good is to take some questions from you guys. Um, if you can enter some questions into the question pod, I will do my best um, to answer them. Let me just see how I can browse them correctly. Um, let's just see. There's lots of I can hear you clearly. Thank you, everyone. I see that now. <laughs> um, here we go. Uh, let me just read this one out. I'm a print designer. Just started out on web design. I'm interested to know um, from your Photoshop template or web page, how do you create the actual size? Does Dreamweaver integrate easily to Photoshop, or would you use something like WordPress? Well, hopefully you've seen from the Dreamweaver um, demonstration um, how you've been able to do that. Um, 
Um, so you can absolutely access all of the sizes and parameters of every single element within the Photoshop document directly from within Dreamweaver. So hopefully that's helped you. Um, also, the other thing that you might want to look at is um, Adobe Muse because Adobe Muse is built um, by the uh, same team as InDesign and Adobe Muse enables you to create websites without writing any code at all. It's template and widget based. Um, you can create for mobile, tablet and desktop. Um, I, I, uh, there are um, tons of tutorials um, online for Adobe Muse and I really, really recommend um, anybody, particularly from print design backgrounds, um, but any designer, you can pick up Adobe Muse and start working with it super fast. It's a beautiful, beautiful application and receiving a lot and lot of fans at the moment. There's also a lot of um, companies who are producing widgets for Adobe Muse, so lots of templated um, elements. If you go to um, the um, Muse Exchange, let me just launch Adobe Muse very quickly, um, you can access all of those, um, but it's a great, great program. So Dreamweaver, do go ahead and work with that and Photoshop, of course, in the way that I've kind of shown you briefly, um, but also Muse, might, you might find, is a better fit for you. Um, let me just open up one of the websites within here. So this is Adobe Muse interface. Here's your desktop. You can add your tablet and your phone layouts as well. Um, here you um, add the structure, structure to your website, um, so you can create all of these pages. And so it's just updating some um, some folder links here. Um, you can also um, enable websites once you've created them, if you're creating them for um, for clients, etc. Uh, you see how easy it is to add pages. You literally just um, click on the plus buttons to increase the structure of your of your document there, and then just double click on a page to add elements to it. Um, but if you're creating for clients, you can also enable in browser editing so that you can um, uh, let them edit without changing the actual um, design of the document. Um, so my widgets panel um, within here, where is it gone? Sorry, let me just find it. Here we go, my widgets library within here, I've got all sorts of elements that I can add, compositions, etc. And I literally just drag and drop these elements into the page. Everything's customizable in the way that you're kind of used to working. Um, so I can easily change um, the parameters, the, um, the colors, the fills, etc. of these. Um, I can also browse online um, to the Muse add-ons, and these are all the widgets that other people have designed that you can download either for free or to purchase, and so there's some really nice things in that. Hopefully that's answered that. Um, oh. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Um, somebody has written, I have been one of those who's been so vocal and dismissive of what Adobe has done with the CC initiative. Had Adobe made more use of Iona to endorse the initiative, I would have subscribed to CC without hesitation. Thank you so much, Harry. I really appreciate that. Um, can I re-watch all of this on later? I believe, was the session being recorded, guys? Um, hopefully the session was being recorded and that will be passed on to you. Um, Okay, great. Um, if I subscribe to CC, will I automatically receive all future updates of the software? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You get it all. Um, you, um, I, I'll, I'll let um, Luke talk about the subscription um, and licensing in a second, but you will always have access to the most, late, most up to date, most recent stuff. You can also go back to previous versions though. Um, CS6 is currently available still by the um, Creative Cloud for Teams, um, and also you'll be able to go back to other major releases as and when you need to um, also, um, if you've got, say, some plugins that don't work and um, that haven't been updated by other countries, for example. Um, you don't have to, um, I, as somebody else has written, um, Harry, I'm worried about being told that you get constant updates. Um, you don't have to update, you choose whether to update or not, so you absolutely don't have to take on the updates. What you'll get in your Creative Cloud panel here um, is um, some info when there is an update. Is there anything? I'm, I'm already up to date. You'll actually get more information um, 
hear as to what the update entails um, and therefore you can make a choice on whether um, you want to or not. Um, let me just see. Um, Are Photoshop, InDesign and Illustrator available to use on other devices such as iPad and future computers I may buy? Um, we're doing an awful lot of work on the touch, um, uh, particularly Windows um, Surface interface at the moment. So as, um, as products get more traction and become more powerful, um, we will be um, doing our utmost to make sure that we've got um, our desktop applications available to you in that form. So, um, so the Surface Pro has got some really incredible um, interface updates for Illustrator, Photoshop and InDesign on there, some really, really nice ways to work. Um, iPads, it's all about um, the power at the moment of the device and of course our desktop applications use a lot of power. But we have a lot of, as you've seen, a lot of mobile applications. I just showed you a fraction of what we have available. So you're able to start doing more and more on the iPad at the moment. Um, but um, that will all be down to um, the power, the processing power and how much we can actually do um, uh, via the internet um, sending that um, functionality to you. So yeah, absolutely. Our aim is for you to be able to work on wherever you wherever you are in whatever way that you want to work um, but we are slightly held back by technology at the moment but we're constantly innovating in that area um, let me just see what else um, why can't Photoshop update to my latest color themes Illustrator has but not Photoshop um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. If you mean the um, Adobe Color um, panel, Photoshop definitely does have that. You might want to try signing out and refreshing um, again. But um, any questions, guys, that I don't answer today um, fully and you need to give me your, more information about, um, then do take my Twitter handle, which is at Creative Sneaks, um, and ping me questions via Twitter. I'm more than happy to follow up with that. So, um, I mean, if you can just give me some more details about that, I'll see what I can find out for you. Um, we saw you have or available all the libraries connected to the internet, but can you work without connection and have everything available in your computer? Um, at the moment, it happens um, via the online space. Um, you don't actually, with your assets, um, with your assets, et cetera, um, that you have stored locally, you have access to them all, um, of course, within um, your online space, but your libraries are specifically via the Creative Cloud at the moment. You can download those assets though um, directly to your computer for to work in an offline way. Um, do you know if Bridge CS6 has been made obsolete? Um, Bridge is still available. Um, in fact, let me just um, come over here. Bridge is currently available within your um, Creative Cloud application and is called Bridge CC. I know there was talk about um, about discontinuing Bridge for a little while, and um, that seems to have gone quiet. Um, we have a lot of users of Bridge, so currently Bridge is within the CC applications and is currently still active. That's as much as I know on that. I, I personally hope we hang on to Bridge because I think it's brilliant. Um, we're very glad that the design team at Monarch Airlines are loving CC. That's fantastic to know, Amrul. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, does Ion have a solution for the reoccurring crashing issues with Illustrator in Design and Photoshop? I'm really sorry you're experiencing that. I have to say I find the applications rock solid at the moment. I know that doesn't help you, but perhaps you can let me have some more information about the um, systems that you're working with, the desktop systems that you're working with. Um, there may be, it may be that um, there's some problems there. Uh, the good thing at least is the applications um, 
upload back again really quickly, I guess, but um, certainly you shouldn't be experiencing lots of crashing issues, and um, particularly with these versions of the products, they, they are um, as, as rock solid as they've ever been. So um, perhaps um, Bytes and myself can help you look into that because we certainly don't want you to be experiencing that, James. So um, do get in touch with some more info. Um, yep. Okay, great. Someone spotted the session was being recorded. Um, whenever I fire up Edge Animate, I get an error message, connection refused. Um, Edward, can you make sure that you're on the most up-to-date version of Edge Animate and um, perhaps send me a screenshot of that and some more information at, to at Creative Sneaks and I will um, help you look into that. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there, but we should be able to look into it. Um, does my Behance profile require to show actual name and whatnot? <laughs> or could I use very artistic alias to act as the driving ground for all my work? <laughs> Thanks, I only you are the coolest. Um, I use Creative Sneaks um, for my Behance profile if I just show you online. Um, so yeah, absolutely, you can um, brand it in whatever, you, in whatever way you want. Um, let's just view my profile here. Um, I have um, my name associated with it, but um, uh, my actual, um, you can see here, my actual um, uh, path is forward slash creative sneaks, behance.net forward slash creative sneaks, and that's how I brand it. Um, so yeah, you'll, you're able to do that, and you should be able to, also able to put in a company name here instead of your personal name. We have people who have company pages um, uh, and project pages particularly as well. Um, how many different machines can I simultaneously use CC? Um, two different machines at any one time. Um, Mac, Windows, Mix, no problem, whatever, whatever combo you like. Mac, laptop, um, PC, desktop, uh, no problem. Um, tutoring in InDesign. Um, a student asked for tutoring in InDesign to do a journal and she, as well as myself, ensure of printmaking process. She wanted a middle section of plates in full colour with two sections of... Oh, we might need to go offline with this, Zena. This looks like a fairly, um, fairly detailed request, um, which I could probably put you in touch with my colleague who covers... Um, in design in particular. Um, so Zena, do ping me at Creative Sneaks. Oh, I see that we've got your email there as well. So um, perhaps Luke and guys, can we take a note of that? And um, I will put you in touch with Tony, my colleague, to help you with that question. Um, OK. Can one use CC apps on two computers? Yes, yes, you can. Absolutely. I think I've mentioned that already. Um, how are we doing with time, guys, by the way? Do interrupt at any point. I'll carry on answering questions otherwise for as long as. Um, Hi. Just to say, EPUB, EPUB fixed layout seems to be... Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. Yeah, we're okay for time. I think um, kind of we'll need to finish up in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, okay. Is that okay? No and, Luke, and Luke's going to do some uh, slides on, on licensing and pricing. Okay, good stuff. Well, I'll just do a couple more of, of these then. Oh, things are starting to glitch a little bit on my desktop. Oh, we're back to normal. Okay, fine. Okay, um, also, also, any questions so, that we can't answer, we can follow up in, in emails and things like that. Exactly, exactly. And like I say, um, uh, via Twitter or via email to you guys, and we can, um, we can continue with that. Um, Somebody's got a bug with the CC desktop panel. Um, again, I think I'd need to know some more details about that. Um, I'm not sure. I've not come across that bug at all. But um, Jane, if you can let us have some more details about that, we'll see what we can look into. Um, I'm afraid I don't know about Rizograph. Um, but Zena, um, 
again, that might be something that I can follow up with a colleague of mine. So let's take that offline and I'll have a little look at that. Um, lots of thank yous here. Thank you very much, guys. Um, somebody's asking, can I use web fonts for any other offline work? So as I mentioned with Typekit, if you download, um, if the web font has got a desktop um, version available, um, then you can absolutely um, work with that as well. So you make sure that you've got your consistency across your online and your offline um, uh, presence there. So again, you can use that for print work as well as um, for web. So yeah, if you've got your... Um, web font installed on your machine, then absolutely you'll be able to use it in an offline form. Uh, somebody, uh, oh, hi, loving your seminar, wondering what your Twitter account is. Um, so yes, it's at Creative Snakes. Let me write it in there. At Creative Snakes, do, um, do all get in touch as you need. Um, are your fonts on Typekit able to save onto your computer offline? Yes, so um, so the desktop version of the fonts, if they're available as the desktop version, you install them and they're on your computer, you don't need to be connected to the internet, you work with them with as with any other of the fonts uh, on your laptop or desktop machines. Why should I upgrade from my CS6 version to a cloud version? So um, CS6 um, applications are several, several versions now behind the Creative Cloud applications. But as I, I hopefully I've shown you within this um, presentation, it's no longer just about the desktop applications. The Creative Cloud is a huge, huge service that kind of spans across your mobile um, workflows, across different computers. It provides you ways of managing and sharing and accessing your assets, creating assets. Um, it's a collaboration platform. It's a sign-off platform. Um, it's a space where you can make sure that you are always up to date. You can get inspiration from the community sections of it. You can publish your work. You can share your work. Um, you automatically have access to every single application. So if you need to move into different areas of creativity, you've got the ability to do that. There's huge, huge amounts of tutorials and training available to you, um, and um, it's it's kind of it's it's just the way that's going to help you be the most efficient, the most effective, and the most creative going forward. Um, again, it's always going to be a personal thing. You're going to look at what the applications have to offer, what the additional services have to offer, offer, and um, as to whether that's um, you know, a compelling reason for you to upgrade, um, but certainly things have moved on a huge amount, um, huge amounts of innovation has happened and updates. If you're just looking at the desktop applications alone, um, you know, you, you've, you've really uh, stepped a long way back from where we currently are by remaining on CS6. Um, so hopefully that's answered that question. I, again, Alex, you know, I'm not going to push anything on you. I just want to show you what's available to you and um, let you make that um, call yourself. Um, hopefully I've shown you some interesting, valuable um, things. Um, why, why does Illustrator still not have an autosave option? That's a good question. Um, Photoshop does. I'm not sure why Illustrator doesn't. Um, uh, perhaps that will <laughs> perhaps that will be something that we should push forward to then. Sorry, I don't know uh, what the roadmap is for that. Would you please show the animation app a little bit? Thank you. Um, now let me just see. I probably have a tutorial on my Behance site for Edge Animate. Um, let me just have a little look, which I could point you towards. Um, here we go, Edge Animate Symbols. So this was made um, quite a while ago, but Edge Animate Symbols, this is a tutorial. I copy this and share the answer there. Um, there's an Edge Animate tutorial there. Again, like I say, it's not the most up-to-date. Um, I will do another one shortly. Um, but that gives you an overview of what can be done. It's quite a complex one. It goes into lots of details about tutorials, but it'll, sh it'll give you an idea as to um, how it works. Um, and it is super easy to get started. With Edge Animate, I'm just going to fire it up very, very quickly here. Um, once you open it, there's actually a tutorials panel built into it. 
Um, so let's create a new file here. And um, you see this lessons window here. If it's not open automatically, you just come into um, window and make sure that you have lessons selected. And then within this, you're able to um, do all the tutorials that are available. So how to import a sprite sheet, um, how to create a motion path, um, how to reuse and create symbols. That would be this section here. Um, you know, right, right from very, very simple animation of keyframes. Really fantastic, easy to use. And also how to import and um, use video and audio as well. Um, so, um, tutorials to do, all of the assets are available and again also online if you jump to, um, I'm sure it, sorry I didn't get a chance to show it, but if you jump to the um, tutorials um, section of adobe.com, um, let me just let that load up and I'll copy this link for you as well, um, there's tons of tutorials and overviews. Um, in there as well. So let me send that. So that's the link to the Edge Animate tutorials. Um, so hopefully you'll um, take a little look at that and um, have a play with it, have some fun. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Um, 100 gig of storage available to you um, through Creative Cloud for Teams. Um, individual users have um, less. Um, um, can you let me know when your Creative Insights for EPUB is coming? It's coming soon on your website, yes. Um, yeah, unfortunately, um, October, November, December became an extremely busy time for me. But yes, I will get back, Harry, to updating my website. Thank you very much for looking on there. Um, and um, that will be just, it will just be an EPUB example publication um, put together. So if you want actual tutorials, then um, do take a look at the InDesign um, uh, tutorials page. There will be tons on there. Let me just give you the link straight away and share that all with you. Um, if you look under the latest features, there'll be tons of stuff on EPUB. Um, new features, October, add interactivity to fix layout EPUB. So let me just send you this link all for here. And hopefully you'll have got that link. Um, is Adobe Edge only available in the cloud service? Yeah, all of the Edge um, tools and products, as well as Adobe Muse, they're only available via the Creative Cloud. They were new for the Creative Cloud. So yeah, that's another reason why um, updating is good. Um, you can access Brackets, which is the um, which is a form of Adobe um, Edge code. You can access um, Brackets um, from if you just search for Adobe Brackets, you can actually um, access that code editor without having access to the Creative Cloud, and that's a fantastic, fantastic code editor. But Edge Animate, etc., all um, all are available only um, through the Creative Cloud subscription. Thanks for your thanks, everyone. Um, do you think working from home on CS4 would be easy enough with CC files, i.e. InDesign docs? Mm, I'm, uh, Anita, I, I, it, going backwards to CS4, I think there's quite a lot of functionality that wouldn't work with, um, there's been so many updates and changes. Um, I think going back that far from CC um, may be a bit of an issue. Um, taking CS4 documents into CC, you might have a better luck that way around. Um, but that was that was so so far back in our release. Now I'm not sure. You you just have to try it. Try it. I'm not sure a lot of the functionality would um, would work. Can I access 
a shared file without CC subscription. Yeah, you absolutely can. So if someone shares a file with you, you don't need to have access to the Creative um, Cloud. You just you get a link and you can access that file. Um, in order to use the collaboration and the um, the extract functionality that I showed you earlier, all you do is create a free Adobe um, account. Um, so you you sign up with an Adobe ID. Um, and you don't pay anything for that. You get two gig of storage automatically as well as part of that. Um, but yeah, so you can absolutely share, collaborate with um, people outside of your company out, uh, who don't have Creative Cloud or within your company who don't have Creative Cloud. Um, that's not a problem at all. They don't need accounts. Thank you, you have been very clear and precise. Well, that's unusual, but thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Hopefully, I am making sense. Um, can I upload my own fonts to Typekit? At the moment, no. At the moment, Typekit is uh, its own font foundry um, uh, uh, service. Um, I'm not sure what in the future will happen with that, because I know there's lots of people use different font foundries and font servers and that sort of thing. I know the Typekit team are addressing all of that and looking at it, but currently um, Typekit um, is a service, a uh, standalone service. So um, watch this space, though, as far as that goes. That's still, it's still fairly early days for us in Typekit. Will I get charged? for any assets I don't load without due warning. So yeah, I think, um, I mean, this is from the um, Creative Cloud Marketplace. Um, uh, you won't, um, you, you would actually have to purchase the assets. I think you've only got, a, you've got a limited 50, so you won't be able to download more than that within the month um, for free. So no, you won't get charged for that. Um, does Adobe CC include access to Adobe DPS. Um, it, the individual um, option used to include DPS, but we found it didn't get any um, traction, so that doesn't. Um, so no, now um, DPS is a separate um, discussion that needs to be had. It's a separate license, um, and that's something that a member of the DPS team can um, talk to you guys about along with um, Bytes, so we can work um, to give you some information about that. But that all depends on um, sort of number of publications, etc., and where you want to publish to. So um, it's a little bit more of a complicated um, discussion than just it being kind of available to everyone. Um, but there are lots of options um, and packages and uh, things available for DPS. So do let's have that discussion, Monica. Um, if you direct that via bytes. Um, do Adobe have a sort of digital editions app for reading EPUB fixed layout on mobile? So we've got, um, let me just open up my iPad. So we have Adobe Viewer. Uh, so if you search the App Store for Adobe Viewer, um, that should be uh, the content viewer for your EPUB. Hopefully that, hopefully that answers your question, Harry. Uh, somebody else asking for the animation app. Hopefully you guys have got a link um, to those tutorials now that I've shared. Um, uh, Edge Animate, um, is Edge Animate a replacement for Flash Pro? Um, so Edge Animate um, is very different to Flash Pro. Edge Animate will take in sprite sheets that you create in Flash Pro, so that's really nice. You can, um, you can create animations in Flash Pro, bring in the sprite sheet into Edge Animate really, really easily. Lots of tutorials on how to do that. Um, Edge Animate creates um, JavaScript, uh, CSS, HTML5 animations, so um, it will run on any platform um, standards-based, um, and you're not going to have the sorts of issues that you do with Flash Pro for iOS um, devices, etc., for example. Um, it's still in early days, and really Edge Animate is dependent upon um, uh, web standards um, and JavaScript, etc. Um, uh, 
development and HTML development. So um, as soon as new CSS um, stylings are confirmed and approved and become standards, we tend to incorporate them into Edge Animate. Even if they're not supported across all browsers, you kind of have the options to use a lot of those um, features. Um, you'll get warned as to uh, if it's not supported, say, on Firefox, but it is on Chrome, and then you'll get a notification of that. So um, it's we're, we're putting an awful lot of effort into Edge Animate to make sure that Edge Animate moves as um, uh, you know as fast as it possibly can within this environment. We still support Flash, but mainly for um, 3D gaming um, and um, video delivery uh, as well. Um, but Edge Animate is certainly where we're putting a lot of our efforts to try and get over the issues that we have with Flash not being supported on um, the iOS platform. Um, so in certain ways, absolutely, Edge Animate can totally replace what people have been doing with Flash Pro, particularly with Flash website design. When it comes to more complex animation, um, you may find that Edge Animate isn't quite there and you need a JavaScript developer to work with as well. But um, you can also um, copy and paste and um, encode directly within Edge Animate as well. So you can encode your JavaScript within Edge Animate as well. So you can um, work in conjunction with um, uh, a coder once you've created your animation to, um, to enhance it as well. So we do that quite a lot too. That's quite a convoluted response, wasn't it, <laughs> Alex? Hopefully, that's hopefully that's um, explained that to you. Um, but yeah, Edge Animate is certainly making huge strides in making sure that it's um, compatible across all devices and enabling you to create animations without writing any code at all. So, um, it's a really fantastic application. My apps in Creative Cloud are taking a while to. I think that means uh, taking a while to load. I think. Um, uh, how do I fix this? Um, Marcia, I'm not sure if that is um, you downloading the applications or actually opening them. Um, they are 64-bit um, native applications, so it may be that um, if your machine isn't 64-bit currently, you may want to look at doing an update because they should launch super fast, as you may have seen with me launching some of them today. Um, you know, they, they do launch at lightning speed, solid straight drives and really help that as well. So um, I would probably say to take a little look at your um, hardware system and just see if there's anything that you can improve on that front. And um, if you're still having massive issues, do get in touch with me, but certainly that's something that um, we spent a lot of time making sure that the applications um, loads and perform super fast these days. Hi, Iona. What are the other? Yes, hi. Hi, sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm going to have to pass over to Luke, but I mean, feel free to, uh, to you can type in um, answers yeah. in the questions box whilst uh, Luke's presenting. Is that okay? Sounds good. Yes, absolutely, of course. Sorry to interrupt again. I'm just going to pass you over <laughs> to, to Luke now. One second. Thanks, everybody. Hi, Iona. Could you just uh, mute your keyboard? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that presentation. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you found that um, quite insightful around the new features uh, for Creative Cloud. I'm literally just going to skip over the, the licensing and pricing for you so you know what um, happens and how you can actually access these Creative Cloud products. Just a quick introduction to Bytes, if you don't know of us. Uh, we are a platinum reseller of of Adobe, so we have the highest level of accreditation and the highest level of discounts. We cover all the sectors, including government and education and commercial. And I understand a few of you are asking about DPS, so we're one of only a handful of DPS resellers within the UK, so we can assist you there too. So there's three different agreements that the Creative Cloud falls under, Creative Cloud for individuals, Creative Cloud for teams, and Creative Cloud for enterprise. So the individual's agreement is sold via adobe.com, and that's really for freelancers or students working at home. Um, so we won't be going over that in too much detail, but if you are on this webinar, then I'll advise you to go to there and seek the pricing through that. Creative Cloud for Teams uh, is sold through a reseller such as Bytes, 
and it's a one-year subscription set of products so there's no minimum entry you get all the features that Iona has been describing to you and um, you can license for the whole suite or an individual application if you just use Photoshop it's done on an annual basis and you can true up at any point so if you do add to users throughout your year you all the pricing is pro rata to your anniversary date so you literally know what you're paying throughout the year and you know what you're going to renew on your anniversary Creative Cloud for Enterprises is a three-year subscription to the creative product so it's a commitment of three years and with that comes a minimum threshold of $150,000 over the three-year term so $50,000 per year minimum spend the main differences between teams and the enterprise solution is one the threshold two the three-year commit with the enterprise solution there's no true down in Creative Cloud for Enterprise whereas there is with Creative Cloud for Teams and the authentication methods differ in enterprise uh, solution where you get more advanced versions of that so the pricing with Creative Cloud for Teams as you can see Adobe offers a migration price if you have existing CS um, licenses within your estate so if CS3 to CS6 if you have them in your estate you can get a 40% discount when you move into the uh, Creative Cloud it doesn't mean you lose your CS licenses it just offers you that discount when migrating over uh, the single applications so as you can see the pricing makes sense if you do use two or more of the applications it may be worth looking at the complete suite um, but if you just use say InDesign then the pricing comes down to £171 if you do have that CS license within your estate and Bytes are able to work with Adobe and yourselves to find out what actual licenses you have purchased so we can get a consumption report for your company and work out the best way to migrate over to the Creative Cloud for you so that's a quick insight into licensing and pricing if you do have any more questions regarding that then please feel free to answer it in the questions pod or come to us after the webinar and we can assist you further so Iona if you want to unmute and then I can open a questions pod too. Hi there. Hi. Uh. So what questions did you get up to, Iona? Just so I know. Uh, so I've answered a few of them. Um, I've just got up to Harry asking, is Media Encoder, uh, Encoder available via CC? Yes, absolutely. It's one of the um, applications that you can download um, individually. Also, if you install and download um, Premiere Pro or After Effects, um, Media Encoder is also accessed um, through those as well. So that will install also. Um, and it's brilliant. <laughs> I would suggest if you're exporting um, video at all from After Effects or from Premiere Pro that you actually, instead of, um, let me just launch Premiere, if I say export the sequence and say file, export my media, um, I'm not showing my screen now, am I, guys? So you won't be able to actually see this. Let me talk it through. Um, you've got an option, instead of clicking on export, when you bring up the export window, you've got an option to, to queue. Um, your media, so that will actually send it out to Media Encoder. Um, uh, it will send it out to Media Encoder, and um, it will enable. Oh, here we go. Share my screen. There we are. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, this is the um, export um, box from Premiere Pro. So you've got the option to click on export here, which would mean that you actually have to sit there and watch it and can't do any more editing. Or you click on Q and that sends it out to Media Encoder. It launches the Media Encoder. Um, a Q here that you can set up and you can create multiple versions of that as well if you want to encode it at different resolutions. You can also set up um, watch folders too. So if you automatically encode this as an MP4 H, um, HD, you could also set up a watch folder that automatically creates your MOV or your um, mobile phone sized version of it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so uh, and that will carry on because it uses the GPU that will carry on encoding in the background, and you can carry on editing, getting on with the um, the hard work that you will still need to do. <laughs> okay, uh, so let me just quit out of that. I just got a question from Monica. Um, um, let's see. 
So Monica's asked, if I subscribe to Adobe CC, would I be able to download the apps on different computers for the same price? So Adobe CC is a per user license um, and each user gets up to two uh, devices that they're able to install on. Um, so one user can install it on two different machines, that can be a Mac or Windows, um, but you are able to download it and that one user gets to install on multiple machines used by multiple people, uh, licensing restricts that. Uh, Zena Taylor's asked, how long does it take to get access to Adobe Creative uh, Suite on Creative Cloud once you register? So the process is very simple. Uh, an invite would come from Bytes. Um, as soon as you get that invite and accept the terms, online terms and conditions, your agreement is set and you can instantly add the products. Um, so pretty much straight away. I've got a question about Adobe Muse from Monica. Um, Monica says, can I export HTML5 from Adobe Muse to edit in simple code editors and host on my own FTP server? And um, the answer to that is twofold, Monica. Um, yes, is the first answer. <laughs> you can absolutely export HTML5 from Adobe Muse and you can absolutely access that um, in your code editor. If I just um, uh, quickly open it up, am I still sharing my screen? Luke? Yes, you are, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, so I can export as HTML in my file export as HTML option here within Adobe Muse. The other thing that I can do is upload directly to an FTP host from Adobe Muse. So if you've got your own server and your own FTP that you want to host it on, you don't have to host it on Business Catalyst and you can upload it um, to your own FTP host, not a problem at all. We've got really good secure um, FTP um, sign-in options. That was um, a latest release. And also, um, you can also uh, do in-browser editing on sites that are hosted outside of Business Catalyst as well. And um, there's just a URL that you go to and sign in once you've set up your users, um, and you can easily um, and you can easily. Um, edit or provide other people editing capabilities from that. So you, it may be that you want to just actually stick within Adobe Muse and FTP um, particular pages. I've got a combination with my website of um, pro sites, um, Adobe Muse, and also um, some fully HTML, um, uh, um, sorry, um, compatible um, pages that I've created that are fully responsive within Adobe um, Edge Code as well. So I've got a combination, but I host it all on a particular server. So you can absolutely do that. Um, and one other thing that I was going to tell you about Adobe News from there. Oh yeah, and of course, if you use Business Catalyst, you um, can actually upload and host five sites for every single user for free. So that's free hosted sites, guys, for you. Um, and you can also upload and host, um, I think it's an, an un unlimited number. It's certainly 10. It, it may be unlimited now of um, development sites, test sites as well. So not live sites, but um, dev sites. You can upload a whole bunch as well um, to host via Business Catalyst. So that's a really nice extra functionality. And you get all of the back-end analytics um, attached to that as well. So you can really see um, uh, where people are coming to um, and how they're accessing your site, etc. I've just got a question here from Adrian. Um, so is the same migration price from later versions of CS, for example, CS 5.5? So the migration price applies to uh, any licenses from CS 3 to CS 6, and that can be a suite, that can be a point application. Um, you do get further discounts the more licenses you buy in one transaction uh, for Creative Cloud for Teams. So if you do have multiple users that need to migrate, it's best to do them all at once. Um, and we can offer you a better discount in that term. And Sylvia has asked if this is for UK only. So no, this is this is global, and Abytes can assist you in global deployment. Um, so if you come to us, and we can work on your your estate if you have global users worldwide. Um, somebody has message Rodo. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, 
I have several interactive web applications made with Flash, with sound, video, and XML external data instances used. Unfortunately, none iOS is um, is capable to reproduce. Which CC tool would you recommend to me? So yeah, it depends on the complexity of the application, really. Um, I would say Edge and Animate has made huge strides in being able to um, do that kind of thing. You would need to recreate these though. Um, Flash can do um, an export to um, HTML and JavaScript um, for certain things. So it may be that the current version of Flash Pro is able to produce something from your current web applications that is able to be a bit more um, platform neutral. but um, that will all depend on the complexity of it. Um, so I would say you're either looking at working with something like Dreamweaver, coding it yourself in um, edge code or brackets, or working with Edge Animate. But that will all depend on um, what it is that the applications need to do and how complex they are. But do definitely look at Flash Pro CC um, and have a look on the tutorials section because there have been, like I say, some huge strides forwards in being, being able to create um, content within Flash and then export it as um, standard space HTML5 and CSS and JavaScript um, uh, output. So do take a look at that and good luck. <laughs> uh, another question from Zena Taylor um, asking, from a switch to individual to a team usage um, if you start off as a freelancer and move into an actual a company. Um, so Bytes can certainly assist you on that and we've done that with many freelancers who have moved into companies uh, and wanted a team usage. Um, so if that does occur then, then come to us and we can sort that out for you. Um, Alex is asking uh, about moving um, from CS6 to an individual single user. Um, Alex, if you have a look on adobe.com, you'll see the um, prices all on that. Adobe.com forward slash UK and go to Creative Cloud. Um, there's tons of pricing and um, details on there. So Amrol has asked how to deactivate the app so you can move it onto another computer. So as the uh, apps are authenticated by Adobe IDs, you would just need to log out of one of the applications or log out of the desktop application, uh, which Iona might be able to show you. Um, but once you've done that, you can then install and log into another machine. Um, if you're having to actually real build a machine um, and you've already installed it twice, then when you attempt to install a third one and log in, a pop-up box will appear asking you to deactivate one of the machines and you can do it from there and then. So Zena's asking, uh, do we purchase Bytes, sorry, do we purchase Creative Cloud through Bytes Software or Adobe? Um, so any sort of team solution or enterprise solution will come through re resellers such as Bytes Software. Um, if you are an individual user, so you're a freelancer and not working for a company, then that is sold through Adobe.com. However, we can fulfill that um, purchase. So it's entirely up to sales with regards to the individual accounts, but teams or enterprise uh, is sold through the channel. I think I've just got one last question from Amin. Um, brackets is brilliant. Used in, I use it instead of Sublime Text. Will it continue to be supported? Um, I mean, as far as I'm aware, Brackets is absolutely flying. So um, yeah, it will continue to be free as far as I'm aware. It will continue to be supported. In fact, there's tons and tons of work um, going on and work uh, happening with Brackets um, at the moment. So do watch this space with that. But Brackets is certainly a very successful application for us. So um, yeah, continue to use and enjoy. I think there's just one last question from Zena um, asking about education discounts for Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, and yes, of course there is, um, and that applies to charities. So charities and education get the same discount. Um, so yeah, if you want more information on that, then obviously come to Bytes and we can uh, let you know the price. So I, I think that's the questions from my point of view, do get in touch with me at Creative Sneaks guys or um, via Bytes. I'm happy to um, try and follow up with some of these other things um, at 
a later point. Um, and just a massive thank you for your attention and your engagement and for joining us. Thank you, Iona. Uh, and thank you to everyone that's joined us. Again, we'll send out the recording of this webinar and uh, feedback on the questions that you've asked.